What's up guys, Evil D here with another update on the Encapsulated Language Project. Okay, so where should I begin? This is going to be a long video, but I guess I should start with uh, the fact that we've had a massive rebranding. So have a look at my screen. I am now looking at the new homepage of the Encapsulated Language Project. This is the documentation for the, for the entire project. So if I click on this, it takes us back to the old thing that we expected, but we've got revamped colors, the logos look better, the design is better, the entire thing is better. And it's not just the website. Uh, the subreddit's been rebranded and even my YouTube channel, you can go check it out, I've got a new banner. The entire thing has been rebranded and it's all been done by Christian, the guy who originally set up the website for us. So here's his Twitter. If you haven't given him a follow, go give him a follow because this dude has invested a lot of time into building the infrastructure that supports this project and making it look professional. Like, by God, have a look at this. This is probably the most professional looking Conlang I have seen in forever. So this project, now I would say that it rivals pretty much the majority of Conlangs out there except for the really, really well established ones in its professionalism. It looks really, really good. And that's what it needs because this is a serious project. We are, we are, we're on a real mission here, okay? We're, we're trying to change the world through this language that we're creating. So I really appreciate it. The dude totally deserves the praise that I'm giving him right now. And I just wanted to point that out again because this type of stuff is what we all see but we subconsciously just, it just passes by us, we don't think about it. And he deserves the praise. Okay, so the second thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, in that, the last video, I spoke about the fact that a proposal, an official proposal was created to create an official proposal committee. And the objective of this committee was simply to ensure that the aims and goals of the language were upheld by the community at large when making proposals. Now that was massively supported by the community, uh, it was approved, and then of course we established the official proposal committee. So there's a new FAQ on the website for those who are interested. It talks about the review of proposals, how it's done, the membership, so how the committee is formed, and we've also listed here the committee members. Now you probably recognize some of these committee members, like the third one is literally Christian, who I'd been, spoken, uh, who I'd been speaking about. I'm the first one, then we've got Armored Farmer. Uh, Armored Farmer's been doing a lot of uh, phonology stuff and also just dealing with random proposals overall. Flame Rate's been really working on the phonetics of the math system. San has been working on the numerals, he's been working on the underlying math system itself, and Zinkobe has been working on various proposals as well. So these are people who have been in this project since pretty much the beginning and have been the most active and really understand what this language is about. So they basically formed the first committee. And the whole purpose of this committee is just to ensure that we stay on track. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about was a random rant I had. So I wrote this massive post that was called the case against case markers. Okay, so a little bit of background. I speak Esperanto fluently. Uh, Esperanto has a case marker. Only one. That case marker is the accusative case, although it's it has various other uses, like it also acts like an allocative case, but it's an accusative case. Now, I've noticed over my many years of speaking Esperanto that the accusative case overall does not really provide much benefit. I love it personally because like you can use it for poetry, you can rearrange stuff, you can get creative, but overall among the speaker base it's really not used. Like, the general order of Esperanto is subject, verb, object, and it's very rare that it changes from that, unless you're talking about poetry or really, really short sentences. And I've also noticed through my studies and also through interactions that most fluent speakers will mess up the accusative case quite a lot. And then also natives of Esperanto, there is a small group, there's like a thousand, two thousand or so, uh, a lot of them actually never pick up the accusative case for various reasons. Maybe because um, they weren't fully like taught Esperanto, like uh, like it wasn't the main native language that they learned, or there's no accusative case in their other home country native language, so they don't really absorb it into Esperanto. Um, but there is, of course, native speakers who do learn it and fluently use it. So I speak about the fact that those two groups exist, but overall I was saying, I don't really see the benefit of the accusative case. And the reason I started talking about cases is because there's been a lot of discussion about what kinds of cases we want in our language. 
And overall, I'm of the opinion that we shouldn't have cases. We should have a fixed word order. However, if we do want to um, deviate from that, we should do something that's kind of like a, a mixture between Mandarin Chinese, like a Mandarin Chinese. It has a particle which allows you to indicate the object only when it's not in the subject verb object position. So when it's moved. So I kind of like that system. And I kind of wrote this here because I've seen a lot of discussion regarding cases and I just wanted to get my thoughts out onto the screen to share with everyone else. And this has generated a lot of feedback. It's actually made me uh, change a few parts of this and add information. One of the people here who's an Esperanto speaker as well, uh, she mentioned that there's actually some studies that show the opposite, that native speakers actually do speak Esperanto accusative case perfectly fine and in fact uh, often correct others. So maybe my uh, an initial assumptions based on the studies I've seen and my interaction with a few native Esperanto speakers was wrong. But overall, I'm still kind of against cases in general. I don't think they're really worth it. The general consensus seems to be, yeah, we're not, we, we don't think they're really worth it either. But I leave that up there, and if you've got a strong opinion, go hit that up as well. Okay, the numerals. Oh my god, fucking numerals. I love the numerals that have been designed for this language. In fact, I've never been excited about numerals in my life. But over the last three, maybe four weeks, I don't know how long this project's been going. But the numerals have been pretty they've pretty much become stabilized. There's been various changes, and in fact, I made the last proposed changes to the numerals, which were accepted by the person who basically invented the numerals. Sanhei did like 90% of the work, and then I tinkered with it, and others tinkered with it, just to like make slight improvements. But we're now at the stage where we want to start choosing, or we want to officialize the numerals. Like, we're now at that stage. They're basically matured. But we have one issue. All of the numerals in some way encapsulate interesting data, maybe arithmetic, maybe multiplication, except for the zero. The zero doesn't encapsulate anything, and in fact, it's mainly just aesthetic when you're looking at the zero. Although Sanhei, who originally proposed the numerals, his idea was that the zero would also be a negative. There's still discussion in the community over whether that's a good idea. So at the moment, we're looking at this as if the zero is just a zero. But we don't know what shape to go with because there's there's no logic behind the zero. It's just It just means nothing. So here's, here's the three different proposals that exist. The dot is the original one by Sanhei. That's just the original one. Now, one I've been kind of pushing for is the box because I think it aesthetically fits with the rest of the numerals and also it fits with the Latin zero so it just kind of creates a little bit of a crossover and a little bit of help when you're learning the numerals. Uh, another one I think was proposed by Ahmed Farmer uh, but it might have been a few other people who have also been speaking about this is an X and I'm imagining like I don't know if this is their thoughts but this is what I'm thinking is that the X kind of shows stop or it shows no. And no means also nothing. So it's also a good representation of a zero. So basically, it's down to a vote at the moment to figure out which one we want to put forward for an official proposal. And the zero really, it's just an aesthetic thing. It's probably one of the very few aesthetic things so far in this language. So if you have a particular opinion, come to this post, check it out, place your vote. Um, if we have a look here... This is another thing. There's been a lot of votes already on this. This is only posted earlier today, my time. And it seems to be that there's still no consensus on this. People can't, like, it's like one jumps ahead and then another jumps ahead and then one jumps ahead. And there's like, because it's an aesthetic thing, you're basically just going, well, what do you guys think? Does, which one looks better? So yeah, place your vote. Okay, next thing. We have a new official proposal to change the phonology. This is a very, very slight change. I can hear an ambulance flying by my apartment, if you guys can hear that. Um, basically, the proposal is simply this. Replace the trill R with a tap or flap R. That, that's the entire proposal. And the reasoning behind it is simply that the trill is notoriously difficult for people who don't have it in their native language, and it provides no benefit over the tap, which is in a lot more languages. And there's no pattern that it's a part of as of yet. So there's realistically no reason to go with a harder sound, a harder uh, phoneme here. So that's pretty much what it's down to. Now I'm just going to quickly refresh this and let's see if there has been a change in how people are voting so far. 
and no, there has not been. So it looks like people are just kind of going, yeah, we agree with that. The trill provides no benefit. Now, I personally think it sounds a little bit better, but I'm also against trills overall because they're notoriously difficult. Now, this was placed, this proposal was by the Gaffer 16. Okay, now, we've had our first proposal on the uh, phonotactics of the language. So, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna open this up. I am not someone who knows anything about phonotactics overall, so I want you guys to come here and read this proposal. It's pretty in-depth, and it's a good proposal from what I can tell. It goes into a lot of detail about what sounds should go with what sounds, and the order, and all that type of stuff. I know nothing about this, so this is up to you guys to figure out, and I'll probably just go with whatever the community agrees with overall. I have literally no opinion on this, but it is a nice in-depth proposal, and I wanted to get some attention towards this because it deserves it. That is pretty much it. If we go back to the subreddit, as you can see, the top of the page has been rebranded. Absolutely beautiful. Is there any new posts? No, that is it. So, if you've liked this video, you know what you guys need to do. Like it, share it around, and sub to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next video.